Can you just explain what Palantir is? I feel like Palantir gets a lot of really bizarre press and people have no concept of what it actually is. It, it, it's because it is a pretty complicated thing to explain. The, the best way I like to look at it is we're taking things that used to be done by IT services. So we started off in the defense world, in the intelligence world, and the US government spends $40 billion a year gathering data. And then they spend you know, a similar amount of money paying IT service professionals to try to build systems to let the analysts see the data, let them share it, et cetera. And it's a mess. They always, their projects go way over budget. They waste billions of dollars as you'd expect on these things. They're paying people to do things the same way they did in the 1980s, 1990s. And, and so, so looking at this after 9-11, we said, you know, wait a second here, the technology in Silicon Valley has gotten way ahead of everything DC is doing. And that, that's actually, that was, that was a sad thing for us to realize because when you're a computer scientist, you look at the NSA in the 1970s and they were way ahead of everyone else by far. So it used to be the US government was way ahead. It's not anymore, no question. And, and so we said, how can we build a platform that out of the box replace the need for this tens of billions of spent? So our platform is an information environment where you could take in data from tons of places, a process that's it's very, very expensive and hard to do and takes a very long time and then secure it and make sure only people who are allowed to can see it and then allow people to build tools on top of it to, to collaborate. So for example, we help, we help you know, intelligence agencies around the world collaborate. We help aerospace companies and their suppliers collaborate with data. So it basically helps you use all the data you're, 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 allowed, to, you're allowed to use and only people who are supposed to see things see them. So it's, it's, just, it's a hard IT problem. So for, for more libertarian-minded guys like you and Peter, does that cause like a little bit of an of a ethical dilemma? You're working with the government. Well, the whole, the whole, well, there's two different things there. First of all, what was happening before we built Palantir was they were building systems to see things with basically very little safeguards because anybody who needed to, I, you imagine like Jack Bauer in the show 24 and there's a terrorist, <laughs> he's just going to go in the database and take the freaking data he needs because otherwise someone's going to die, right? And so people are just like, a lot of people were like, screw civil liberties, we're just going to take whatever we can. And so as civil libertarians, we said, no, we're going to build Palantir. It's going to give them more powerful access, but it's also going to be able to make audit trails. We're going to know exactly who did what, and we're going to enforce the rules. And whatever the rules are, we're going to enforce them. We don't make the rules. President Obama makes the rules. President Bush made rules. We, we're going to enforce whatever the rule, you know, Congress does. We're going to enforce those rules. And so, so, so first of all, first of all, it was, it was actually, Palantir is like the most awesome privacy engine in the world because we really enforce it. If you use Palantir, it's very hard for you to get away with anything you're not supposed to do. So that, that was something we were really heartened by. And the second one's an interesting question. I've built a lot of things now in GovTech, uh, you know, I think for me, it's part of being a realist. If you think you asked about being a libertarian, you know, Cato is the most famous libertarian in the Roman Republic. And what Cato would, would do is he, he wouldn't compromise at all. And so he's really admired for being uncompromising and constantly, you know, fighting for what was right. But because he wouldn't compromise, he wouldn't work with Pompey. Pompey went over to Caesar. They eventually lost the Republic because mm -hmm. he was so stubborn, he couldn't get things done. And therefore he lost the entire thing and the entire thing was gone. So. As much as I admire Cato and I have a lot of Cato in me, as I've grown up, I'm a realist. And so I want to fight for my values as, as well as possible. But if the government's going to be doing something, like let's actually help it reflect our values of a free society as much as possible. Let's help it not waste billions. Let's help it protect civil liberties. Let's help it actually get the terrorists. Because in the worst of all worlds is that the government is, is doing all these things and it's viciously incompetent. I think that's probably really bad for everyone.